Well, guys, I know we're a little long here this morning, but God is here. He is working, and I just praise the Lord that you are here uh, today. Well, guys, we're going to continue our faith series. Um, I know it was supposed to just be five parts, but God just keeps extending it. And today is no different as we now look at what would be part seven for those of you that have asked Alicia to do a CD recording or those of you that look at it on Facebook or download it off our YouTube channel, um, whatever it might be, we are going to continue uh, this series. If there was ever a time for us to be getting stronger in our faith, uh, it is now. And this series here today, uh, this part seven of this series today, is going to come from a different perspective. It's going to come from the perspective of the corporate body, us, okay, as we long to exercise our faith as well as to carry out the great commission of being soul winners and making disciples more particular for Jesus Christ. But in Mark's account, he goes even further that believers are supposed to teach are supposed to lay hands on the sick, supposed to even cast out demons. I mean, Mark gives a full list in the Great uh, Commission as he finishes up his letter that takes the gospel and the commission and our purpose to a much greater place even than Matthew's account so that today it's going to be about how do we exercise our faith corporately. What we're going to see here today through Jesus and his sovereignty and, of course, the Father's will being carried out, that when God begins moving, it's not just so you can be blessed, but so that everybody in your platform can be blessed. Everybody can hear the gospel. Everybody can have an opportunity to be prayed over. Everybody can have an opportunity to have deliverance if they are in bondage or whatever it might be. So today is not just about you and your faith being built. It's about us and our faith being built. And I want to read two passages of Scripture. If you guys would stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Mark chapter 6, and we're going to be reading verse 53 down to the end of the chapter, which is just this verse 56. And then I want to read from Mark 16 and the Great Commission. Mark chapter 6, beginning at verse 53, and I will be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret and anchored there. And when they came out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him, ran through the whole surrounding region, and began to carry about on beds those who were sick to wherever they heard he was. Where, wherever he entered, when, I'm sorry, wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made well. Mark 16, beginning at verse 14. Later, he, Jesus, appeared to the eleven. Judas had killed himself, so it's just eleven. This is before Matthias. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Listen carefully. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word today. In Jesus name. Amen. Faith. Corporate faith, a faith that is going to impact more than just you. In a time in which everything is the me generation, everything is about 
you know, my Twitter account, my Facebook blog, my space, all these other things that deal with the individual. Well, I'm here to tell you that our faith in Christ should be determined not by the, the pronoun I, but by the pronoun us and we and they, those that are in our platform. For such a time as this, we have been called. And here we're going to see something really significant. As Jesus, who had just walked on water, and if you were here last week, we talked about Jesus walking on water from Mark's account, and then Peter walking on water from Matthew's account, and we brought both pieces together. Again, if you weren't here, I would encourage you to get those sermons, get all of these series, because they really do go together uh, like a puzzle. But we're going to see something. Chloe, if you can put up the map that I, that I gave you there. Um, and we're going to see something because a plan was changed. Okay, now we know from last week, Jesus had sent the disciples out in the boats. And here they are on the Sea of Galilee. And they were supposed to be traveling to Bethsaida. Okay, however... Because of the storm that God brought about the disciples on the boat when Jesus showed himself as the one walking on the water and said, be of good cheer, do not be afraid, only believe it is I, Jesus said. Okay, we're going to find that in the midst of that storm that Jesus changed the direction the disciples were going. Have you ever said this statement about a situation in your life? How did I get here? How did I get here? Now, the disciples, they're supposed to be, Jesus sent them this way. The storm comes. He comes walking on water. And now they're way over here in a place called uh, Genesaret, which I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. And they're way over here to the northwest when they're supposed to be going to the northeast. Most people don't realize that their destination changed. People wonder, well, why did God do that? Well, storms sometimes happen, but there's something else that's really significant. If you know the gospel in Jesus' ministry, you know that Jesus rebuked Bethsaida because of their unbelief. They were wicked, and Jesus rebuked them. Jesus was, did not speak highly of this place, if you look in places like Matthew 11 and other places. And so Jesus knew that if the disciples went in that direction, they would not be prepared nor equipped to handle the life that they were about to sail into. Okay? Jesus sent the multitudes away from where he was because they too would not be strong enough or equipped to walk into such a turbulent community as Bethsaida. I am here to tell you that God in his sovereignty, if you are not equipped and strong enough to walk and live out your faith in which we live today, God may change your destination too because of his love. He doesn't want to see you walk into a place that you cannot handle. Okay, He does not want to see you go into a place where you may cause someone else to stumble or cause a community to actually reject the gospel rather than receive it, especially if you yourself personally are not prepared to go into that place. Now, maybe if you are prepared and you understand the last two parts, Jesus walking on water, Peter walking on water, and you know who the Lord is, and you are of good cheer, and you are not fearful, you are not afraid, you are not worried, you are not lost, you are not confused, but instead your mind is at peace, and God's love, and God's favor, and God's blessing is ministering to you, then you can handle the place in which we are sailing to. The disciples could not. Jesus brings them to a place that would be filled with followers, though, who were hungry to exercise their faith. Not all of us can go to Nineveh, but some of us can. However, all of us can go to a place and we exercise our faith together in the community of the United States of America 
if we are bold enough to be true to what we know is real. When we look at this story and we see God do a change, certainly there would be blessing. Certainly there would be honor. Certainly there would be the miraculous. There would be salvation. But I couldn't help but wonder, what about the people of Bethsaida? What about the people of Capernaum that Jesus also brought uh, pending judgment upon them? What about those individuals? What about Rumford? What about northern New England? You guys know that we live in the region that is the least reached. We have fewer people who are evangelical in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont than any other part in the world. We're basically an unreached people group. It's 3% in Maine, or 3.5% in Maine, 3 and a quarter percent in New Hampshire, and Vermont is only 3%. If it gets below 3%, we're considered an unreached people group by the definition of missions. We live in a place where our harvest field is all around us. I'm not in the Bible Belt anymore. I'm not in a place where I can take my bulletin and get 20% off tomorrow if I go into a restaurant. We live in New England. Yes, it's the home of the Great Awakenings, but guess what, guys? Jonathan Edwards isn't preaching today. Okay? We're living in a time where we have to be equipped as a body if we want to see miracles take place and understand what faith is. Well, here Jesus knew his disciples weren't ready. Now, they would be ready, of course, post-Pentecost. They would go into all these places. But they were not ready now. I wonder how ready are we? Will we stay comfortable? And if we do, we still need to exercise our faith. That's what Jesus is going to show here to the disciples, even though the storm had changed directions and bring them to a place of the country and agriculture rather than a trade route and fishery and money and business and more people. He brings them over here, but he still expected his children to exercise their faith corporately. Or maybe God is going to raise folks out of this church to be pastors and missionaries and teachers, and you're going to go to another place that is pure wicked or live in a place that is unrighteous. I will tell you guys, Rumford's becoming that place more and more all the time. Oxford County, abuse, reports, domestic violence, is up 30% in the past year. Addiction, up 30%. Crime rate, up 30%. And suicide, up 30%. Rumford and the River Valley has all the big problems that a big city has, just in a rural area. Some of you are not from here. You're going to get on the plane and go back to Texas, go back to California. You know? Harry, you might be back in the Commonwealth of Virginia. You know, we, are, we come from different places. People that are watching on Facebook, coming from different places, watching. Some people watch from India. So this message today is not just for the locals of Rumford. I believe this message in God's word is for all of us and everybody watching to be applied into your life and into your scenario. You might be in Rumford saying, how in the world did I get here? I've been asking that for 18 years. How did I get here? We wonder sometimes. We have people living in our community that have no family or friends, and they've arrived here because the state brings them here. They come into Portland. Portland says we'll pay three months for your rent, and you come here with no, no attachment at all. A lot of different reasons. You know what God is doing in your life. Verse 53, as we break down the scripture, 
when they crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret, which is interesting. They are not where they were going. Jesus told them, go to Bethsaida. That's not where they are. And they anchored there. They anchored there. The boat comes ashore. They are, they are at a different place than where their original intent was supposed to be. If you don't believe me, look back up in verse 45. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitude away. Well, they're, at, they're not in the northeast corner. Now they're in the northwest corner. They're not on a trade route. They're in agrar an, an agrarian place. Life is different there in that part of the Sea of Galilee. And we all know, if you've ever been up to Moosehead Lake, you know how different both sides of the lake are. Okay, culture is different, even though it shares the same body of water. I can tell you the Chesapeake Bay, I'm from the mid-Chesapeake Bay, very different in the mid-Chesapeake Bay than Baltimore. Very different culture. We are the seafood industry. They are the trade industry. Okay, very different. A body of water does not mean that culture is the same. Clearly, they are in a different place. But they've come where Jesus brings them. It is the storm that brought them there. It is the storms that may be bringing you to church that we see in our culture. I can't stay home anymore. What's going on in the world? God's stirring our hearts and folks coming to PAG that were not here two years ago, that were not here a year ago. Matter of fact, we've had almost 15% of our body flip-flop. 15% brand new individuals during this COVID era. Our membership defines that. Our attendees define that. And those that, that aren't here aren't going anywhere. They're at home. Maybe some are watching right now. But the storms of life can shake us up differently. But they crossed over and they anchored. That means they're getting out of the boat now. That means it's time for the ministry component to take place which is why I had you guys stand for the reading of the Great Commission from Mark's account so you can understand what should be following us as we carry out our faith and we carry out our works unto the Lord. And so the scripture gives us that insight, okay? And verse 17 of Mark 16, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, Jesus said, they will cast out demons. We've been praying over the sick and tormented. A lot of people tormented souls, and I believe some demons are coming out in Jesus' name because the power that is in the name of the Lord. Do you know that Rumford has the highest mental illness per capita in the state of Maine? It's huge. Right here on Congress Street, we got three mental health companies and a church in between. That's pretty cool. Well, we have, we have Jesus, and Jesus said this, these signs will follow. Cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. God will in, empower them change them from the inside out. They will take up serpents. Now, this is key because this deals with persecution. We are not a snake picking up church, so I'm not going to pull a, new, a snake out of the piano, okay? I'm not going to do that and say, oh, come on up, and if this don't bite you, you're faithful. That's not what we do. But here, we're talking about persecution, okay? That you will serve the Lord, and God will protect you or as Paul says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, okay? That we will stand true and we will uh, not be uh, turned away from our faith in the Lord, okay? We will not be hurt. We will not be hurt. They will lay hands on the sick. We've been spending a lot of time praying over individuals the last couple of weeks. Even today, God just laid on my heart to pray for those who I knew were here were sick or who were at shut-ins or at home or who were not, not here today for whatever reason, that God would hear the prayers even though those individuals were not here. Why? So that they would recover, the scripture says. That they would recover. Now it's time for ministry to begin. But we're going to see here, it's not just from the so-called disciples, but it was more from believers, believers who had responded, believers who had heard that Jesus was on the way. And this passage of Scripture sets the tone for what's going to happen wherever Jesus goes from this point until his death on the cross, is that multitudes would follow. But what would they do? And when they came out of the boats, 
verse 54. This is back in Mark 6, Mark 6, verse 54. And when they came out of the boat, immediately the people recognized Jesus. The people recognized Jesus. Now, we have to understand if, if the map, you know, Jesus was, was this way. Now he's coming back to basically in the same area of Capernaum where they were, and they recognized Jesus. They knew something special was about to happen. The Savior was on the scene. But the disciples had just been changed because they saw Jesus walk on water. Peter walked on water. Jesus said, be of good cheer. Do not be afraid. That we know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But the people recognize Jesus. I asked you a question this morning. Do people recognize Jesus in you? Can people tell you're a child of the king by how you conduct yourself, how you exercise your faith, by your authenticity, by what you are persuaded in and what you are persuaded in is true. And I can tell you right now, church, if there was ever a time, we better start to proclaim our faith is in God and not in government. Or you will get bulldozed. It is a time for us to be recognized as children of the King. As we learn Wednesday night, our flesh was buried with Jesus. If you're a believer, your flesh was buried with Jesus. And Jesus brought life with his resurrection, and he brings life for you. Jesus should be the one. There should be something different about each and every one of us. Why? The world recognizes Jesus in us. Here, they recognize Jesus. They recognized him. The people recognized him. Notice last week we learned the disciples didn't recognize Jesus immediately, did they? They thought it was a ghost. Remember? Jesus had to calm them down. They did not recognize Jesus. I'm here to tell you, just because you go to church does not mean you will recognize the hand and voice of God. However, a real child of God will, because the scripture says that the sheep know the voice of their shepherd. A real believer will be producing fruit in their life, walking in the like-mindedness and the unity that is found in Christ Jesus and his Holy Spirit. There will be blessing. There will be truth. The disciples were not at that place, but these people were. They recognize Jesus immediately. And then they're going to respond by faith. I pray when people come to check out Praise Assembly that they will recognize that God's word is being preached and taught. That God is here through the worship of Jesus Christ, the Lord. The Holy Spirit is moving forth. People are... People are getting prayed over. People are getting fed spiritually. They're growing in their walk. They will say, I pray. Because I don't really don't care about the numbers. I longed it a long time ago. Don't focus on the numbers. You can have a whole bunch. You have 10,000 people up in, a, up in a building. But that doesn't mean Jesus is on the scene. Okay? Jesus is on the scene when we care about the things that Jesus cares about. And we become more like him, less of us and more of him. Or as, or as Luke declares... During, as he records Peter's sermon in Acts chapter 2, you are going to have devotion, you are going to have fellowship, you are going to have breaking of bread, and you are going to have prayer if it is truly a healthy body of believers. These new lights in here don't make us any closer to God because it's a better atmosphere. What brings us closer to God is our faith. When we believe, which is the whole theme of this series, how is God going to get the glory? How is his will going to be done? When we believe. When we believe. We find now people as they recognized him. Look at verse 55. They ran through the whole surrounding region. They ran to the whole surrounding region. They saw Jesus, and they began running back to homes. They began running back 
to places where the sick were laying, where the lost were living. They began to do something with great excitement. They did not have any ounce of lethargic behavior in them at all. When they saw Jesus, and they knew Jesus was on the scene, and Jesus was going to move forth and walk on the ground of that soil, they ran to the whole surrounding region. When was the last time we had excitement like that? I'm sure we all know people here who are sick. I'm sure we know people here, we prayed over a lot of them today. And some of them could be here today if they wanted to be here. Okay? We, pray, we prayed over some individuals and families who are going through a hard time. But these individuals were sick. But it was the healthy who ran through the whole surrounding region and began to carry about on beds those who were sick to wherever they heard he was. Where is Jesus? I pray he'd be right here at 89 Congress Street. I pray that we will exercise our faith and bring the sick to this place to be prayed for. To bring the lost here so that they can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. To those who are possessed, bring them in here. Some people say, Pastor, they might cause a scene. I don't care. We want to pray for them. Because Jesus said these signs will follow that we will cast out demons in Jesus' name. That God will move. God will bless. But notice, they brought their sick and their lonely and their hurting to wherever Jesus was. In this particular case, it's exciting, and we will see this trend throughout the Gospels. And Jesus would have compassion on them. Jesus would minister to them. Remember we talked about a couple weeks ago, the dudes that cut a hole in the roof and lowered down the sick, paralyzed guy? They brought them to Jesus. They brought him there. And Jesus said, great faith you have by bringing your sick. Now, in our culture today, we say, keep the sick at home. That's not how they rolled here. These people needed help. They couldn't get there by themselves. It was the believers who saw Jesus, and they knew Jesus would heal them, their friends, their family. And I believe Jesus is going to heal us and this body of believers. I believe, church, that even as the signs of the times unfold, our faith can be exercised successfully, even in the midst of pestilence. I believe today that our faith, even in the midst of a childhood issue like Miss Laura has, still all these years later, God's bigger than that because he got up out of the grave. And I don't believe Miss Laura has to wait to get to heaven to get healed. And I believe, just as Jesus declared, do not be afraid, only believe. That corporately, this community that we call the River Valley, that we call home, can be impacted with the gospel and we can see God do a great work as he revives us far faster than any clinic, rehab, or prescription could ever do. I'm not saying those things aren't, you, I believe that, you know what? I'm not going to say if you take a pill, you're, you're not, I don't believe that one bit. God uses physicians, and I work with them all the time, and it's wonderful, it's great, and I praise God for them because this would be a very bad place. What I am saying is God is the great physician, and he can do things instantly and set captives free instantly. Why aren't we seeing it? Because we don't have the corporate attitude. We don't recognize Jesus 
and what he can do in any situation. Today we are praying over folks and praying for folks with cancer. Jesus can take care of that. We're praying for folks who are tormented. Jesus can take care of that. We're praying for individuals who are living in abusive homes, and Jesus can take care of that. We're praying for individuals who are still struggling to make it, even though the government has double and tripled food stamps, uh, increased aid left and right, all that kind of stuff. And we still have folks in horrific financial situations. But we know God can take care of that. And we certainly know the sicknesses that are in our community. And God wants to heal. My prayer is we will have a corporate faith. And we will say, you know what? There's some extra seats down there at 89 Congress Street. And you know what? We got some extra seats racked up. We can put 250 people in here as our fire capacity. We could, even if we all just brought one person. I encourage you. Ask somebody to come to church next Sunday. Ask them to come tonight. Even someone who is not well. Even if somebody says, if I came, the roof would cave in. Tell them we got a brand new roof up there. 60000 dollars Okay? A rubber. It's firm. It's strong. It's not going to cave in. Studies show that 85% of people would actually go to church if somebody invited them. But when you go, go immediately this afternoon. Go with some enthusiasm. Go in faith that God is already stirring their heart even before you do ask them. Maybe somebody will say, man, I've been thinking about coming to church. Or maybe somebody will say, I've been driving by after I get my coffee and I'm wondering what's going on in there. Maybe somebody will say, I'm just sick and tired of having this tormented spirit. And there's actually a group of believers that aren't afraid of that. Because if God be for me, who'd be against me? I don't care if somebody's eyes turn bright red. Voice changes. I've de- we've dealt with it all. We're going to anoint. We're going to trust God. Do not be afraid. Only believe. <laughs> Immediately, they recognize Jesus. I believe our Lord is here through his Holy Spirit. I believe God is very pleased with what's going on here at 89 Congress Street. The blessings, the fruit, the financial blessing, the financial fruit, people being discipled. Today, I thought we had a great Sunday school class. People developing friendships, relationships. Folks confessing sin today, five people. And all I do is finish teaching a class, and either people are coming to me right after class or right before the service. I know God's working. God's here, and you recognize that. The altar time at communion time, several people. I noticed several people were bowed in prayer, unless you were asleep, which, by the way, I'm bringing Hannah's Nerf gun now. Anybody's asleep, I'm going to rack that thing five times and it can shoot 40 feet. So look out, Andy, back there. I might get you. Montana, take that hit. (laughs) I've got a new gun. Actually, it's Hannah's, but I use it with the kiddos, too. Those things are interesting. Pretty accurate, too. Yeah, I guess you'll get a super soaker. That'll really do it. Get baptized by the pastor right in the middle of a sermon. That might not be too good. They ran through the whole surrounding region and began to carry on beds those who were sick wherever they heard he was. I believe Jesus is here. I believe his presence is here. I believe his words going forth. And I believe if we pray, if we lay hands on the sick, they will recover. I believe it wholeheartedly. That's why I was disappointed when the state wouldn't let me go in and visit the sick. Going to nursing homes, 
unless somebody was on their very end and they basically, as Catholics call the last rites for Protestants, it's basically a deathbed prayer. But those who were sick, they brought before him wherever he was. Jesus said greater things we will see and do through the work of the Holy Spirit. Verse 56, as we finish this morning, wherever he entered, wherever Jesus went, if he went into villages, cities, or the countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces. Wherever he went, church, wherever we go, we can lay hands on the sick. This week at school, most of you know I teach at Oxford Hills Christian Academy, and I love it there. And um, we had one of our students whose mom had recently been hospitalized. And um, it's one thing when you say, hey, I'll pray for you, or I'll pray for your mom, pray for your family. It's another thing when you stop class right there and pray. <laughs> and I can tell you, I was blessed when I looked at Facebook a little bit later and found out they were discharged and home. That's God. That's God. Wherever we go, you could be on vacation. Happens to me every time we go somewhere. Wherever we go, may we take Jesus with us. Don't leave him at home, when you go to go someplace, well, I don't want Jesus to go there. Now, that don't work like that as a believer. Remember, the flesh is dead. We're not supposed to be living in our flesh that's sinful. That was buried. Paul says in Romans 6, why are you guys living in the stuff that was supposed to be buried? Wherever we go, may Jesus be there. And wherever we go, may people find out where we are and find out who we are and that we believe in God, and that we believe in Jesus, and we begin to have an opportunity to lay hands on the sick in the marketplace. Can you imagine if you were up in Walmart just praying with somebody? Have the faith to do that. Right there at that moment, just as Jesus immediately healed the man as he's coming down through a hole in the roof, immediately he's going to begin healing these individuals. As faith is exercised, know that the Lord is ready to move. Right at that moment, right at that moment, trust the Lord. And corporately, we can do this. I know fully that as if we trust God for this, he will start healing. He will start saving. He'll fill every seat in this place to where we have to have two services. Not because of an awesome, uh, you know, performance with awesome spotlights and staging and smoke that's flying here and there and, and everybody's looking the part and everybody's doing great and everybody's drinking the most fancy water in the world like we're the biggest band there ever was. I think we had a pretty good worship band today. It's pretty good when you got Larry who just turned 80. How many worship teams have an 80-year-old and a 6-year-old on the same stage? God's been good to us. God's been good. God's been good. God's awesome. He's here. He's here. And I long to see this place filled. Because I believe as we corporately exercise our faith and we trust God, obviously, we best have a relationship close with the Lord, too, as we're talking about. Understand the power of Psalm 91. Understand that tribulation may come. Understand that persecution may come. But you are persuaded in what you believe. The disciples at the time of Mark 6 were not persuaded. And Jesus knew that, and he had to change the direction around. But I can tell you what, these individuals who were going home and as far as they could get to in the region in which they lived, to get their sick and carry them to the marketplace where Jesus was is the kind of faith I want PAG to have. And the last part of verse 56. And they begged him. They begged Jesus. 
that they might just touch the hem of his garment. Jesus, the scripture shows in several parables where we keep, we keep talking to the Lord until the breakthrough comes. I've been praying for Laura. How long have I known you, Lord? 13 years, 14 years? Been a long time praying for her. I'm not going to stop until God brings the blessing. I remember praying for Miss Summer when we were in middle school or elementary school, whatever it was, at our home church, that God would heal her. You don't stop. You keep imploring God to bring the healing. These individuals who had corporate faith, they begged Jesus that if these guys could just touch the hem of the garment. And back in those days, the hem of the garment usually had tassels to where they would have sometimes as many as 10 tassels, uh, sometimes 15, but just to touch the hem of one, which were often symbolic of, of the Lord's word and the cam- commandments that he gave. And so if they could just touch the hem of his garment, think of the woman with the issue of blood. She fought through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? What an amazing faith. Here, this is a corporate body. This isn't just one lady with an issue of blood. This is a corporate body who are begging Jesus, Lord, if the people we bring you, if the people we bring you could just touch the hem of your garment. And look at what Jesus did. And as many as touched him were made well. What a miracle. These people who were made well would not have been healed if it wasn't for the faith of the corporate body. Now, if you're not persuaded that Jesus is moving forth in this house, if you're not persuaded that there's power in prayer, Jana, was it you that said power in prayer? Praise God. What a testimony right there. If we are persuaded in that truth, we've got to believe. If we're not persuaded, we'll never invite. We will be fully content with coming in here by ourselves, hopefully get blessed rather than to be a blessing. Hopefully God will do something, and if he doesn't, well, I'll just go on home and watch a football game. But if we are persuaded in what is true, corporately speaking, those on our platform will be ministered to by King Jesus. Guys, I can't heal nobody. I can't, you know, I, you people say, Pastor, you're a great listener, and, and you, you, you got so much wisdom, and I just appreciate you so much, and all that kind of thing. Church, I'm here to tell you, it is God who gets the glory. It is God that we recognize. God might call me home tomorrow. What would happen to this church? I might get arrested. What would happen? Do you know that there's legislation pending in Augusta that would consider, uh, even within the church, a pastor preaching marriage as one man and one woman could be a hate crime? These things are on the way. These things are on the way. Well, what would happen here? Did you guys know how to exercise your faith? Corporately. Corporately. Because I know for a fact that if I ever get big if I ever get bigger than Jesus here, he's gonna take me out. I want no part of it. Why my name people keep saying, Pastor, why don't you get his name on your sign out there? Been there long enough. I want no part of my name on no sign. This is God's house. He's the one working here. He's the one that is being true. It is he that we recognize, not me. All of us must keep that in mind. It is not you. It is Christ in you that the world will recognize, or the believer would recognize, or that we could impact with the faith of Jesus Christ. So I finish with reading again the Great Commission from Mark's account, verse 15, Mark 16. And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. 
They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Most people don't realize that Jesus said that after rebuking the disciples for their unbelief and their hardness of heart. I ask you today, do you believe? Can you declare unequivocally, I am not afraid, I only believe? Is your hard heart or is your heart open to where our faith together can produce a revival that will only build and grow the kingdom of heaven on this earth as well as in heaven. Corporate faith. I pray you will join me in wanting to have your faith be exercised in a corporate setting for such a time as this. The test will come soon enough. I'm not going to tell you what date that test is going to be or what class period because it's the Lord's time. The, the, the time of the disciples' test was when they were out in the middle of the sea. Your test could come this afternoon at lunch. Your test could come today when you're talking with your wife about today's sermon. Your test could come when you're talking to your kids. Your test could come in your prayer closet in the morning when God may come to you as a burning bush. The test will be a pop quiz, I can tell you that. So be ready when the teacher asks you to take out your paper and number it 1 to 10. The teacher will not be me. It'll be the one they call Rabboni, Jesus Christ. And you'll probably say, how did I get here? And Jesus will say back to you, walk by faith and not by sight. Jesus will say back to you, do not be afraid, only believe. Now go get people and tell them. Go get people. You have and tell them that you have recognized me, you have recognized truth, and I will heal. I will show compassion on all those who touch the hem of my garment. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this awesome, awesome day that you have given us today. Lord, I thank you for Mark chapter 6 and Mark chapter 16. Lord, I thank you for the time in which we live. What an exciting time to live during these last days. And Lord God, I pray each person here will get corporally involved. Lord, that will get involved to the point of going back and ministering to those who are in isolation, those who are confused, those who are bewildered, those who are tormented, those who are struggling with addiction, struggling with even abusive tendencies, neglect of their children. Lord God, those who are struggling with demonic spirits. And Lord God, I pray, Jesus, that we will reach out, that we will be strong, we will be equipped to be able to minister for if not, we will be no different than Bethsaida when Jesus declared pending judgment upon them. Or no different than Capernaum Father God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here who is not persuaded that you are the Savior of their life, make the persuasion come today. Jesus, you are the sovereign Lord, and you are very much still headlining this thing we call life. If you're here today and you want to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life because you have been persuaded 
that you need a Savior, I invite you to come and just simply receive the greatest gift. Admit you're a sinner. Admit, therefore, you need the Savior, Jesus Christ. Believe that he suffered on the cross but rose again the third day. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And he called people publicly. If you're watching on Facebook, I encourage you, write it in the comment section, I need Jesus. Someone will pray with you right now over the computer, and I'll follow up with you as soon as possible. If you're here today, and you're not sure if you could recognize Jesus. You're not sure you even recognize him in here by what he's doing. Or maybe when your life becomes a roller coaster, your, your confidence level just dips, and therefore you're uncertain that God is even real. The disciples, they had hung out for Jesus by, by the time of Mark 6 for a little bit of time, turned water into wine in Canaan. He had already fed 4,000 people with a little boy's lunch. But maybe now, with all the turbulence in the world, you're not sure. You're not sure if it's the Holy Ghost in here or some other ghost. I invite you to come and let God show you who he is. If you're here today, and corporately, you want to be part of a family of God that will go and declare the word of Jesus Christ and you want Jesus to be recognized in your life by those and witches in your platform I invite you to come and I pray that I don't know I pray the whole congregation would say yes that's me I want to do that if there's not room for you to pray here to stand to your feet move a chair bow in prayer but if you want to be part of a corporate body that will immediately respond and immediately go. Immediately bring the sick and the lost and the tormented into the marketplace or to wherever Jesus may be, which hopefully is in your life everywhere. Certainly here at 89 Congress Street, say, I want to be that person. If you're here today and you, and you minister to people who are sick a lot, especially you, God's entrusted you a platform with the greatest message of all. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. That whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If God is speaking to your heart for something else, please come. Let's seek the face of the living God while he may be found. Do not delay, church. Be persuaded immediately in who Jesus is. For if you don't, Expect the storm to redirect your path, just as Jesus did with the disciples at the Sea of Galilee.
one here will take their candle and go light the world. And Lord, as Mordecai told Esther, for such a time as this, Lord God, <laughs> I pray no heart is troubled. I pray that each one of us will endure to the end. 
And Lord, we will do our corporate part. Even if it's just one person we bring. Wow. And as was testified by Russell earlier, Lord, your love, that cup never runs dry. And you want to save the unlovable, the unapproachable. You want to save the most wretched person in our society. Just as you wanted to save Saul of Tarsus and Damascus Road. Lord, you want to save each person in this room of that But we have a part to play. Corporately, Lord, may we exercise our faith and play that part successfully. Lord, you're the head, but some of us are the arms, some of us are the legs, some of us are the toe, some of us are the finger. So we each have a part in this orchestra. But you, Lord, are the conductor. And I pray, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And use this body corporately to carry about your business for such a time as this. Bless us now as we go. Lord, watch over us. Protect us today. This is your day, Lord. So may we be found honoring you and resting in you today. And Lord, prepare our heart tonight through Pastor Joe as he's going to bring your word tonight. Use Crystal and I, Lord, as we instruct your word to the men's and women's group. But Lord, ultimately I pray as we continue to draw closer to one another in times of prayer, study, worship, devotion, and holy communion like this here today. More importantly, I pray, Lord, that we will draw closer to you. For your word declares in James 4, 8, if we draw nigh or draw near unto you, you will draw near unto us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Take your candle and go light the world.